Hello, this is Attorney Gordon Johnson with BrainInjuryHelp.com. Today is March 24th at 3 o'clock this morning in Chicago. A CTA train crashed into the end of the line at O'Hare Airport and actually went up partially up the escalator. Now, thank God it was 3 o'clock in the morning and there were only 30 people potentially hurt. But each time there is one of these crashes with a bus or a train, and especially a commuter train, I get re-concerned about how serious a risk there is of brain injury in such crashes. The reason that crashes of things like subway cars, things like L cars, things like rental car buses, is that where in an automobile we get the protection of a seatbelt, we get the protection of airbags, we get the protection of all of those things that have designed to make vehicles more safely in a train, in a train car, especially one like a subway car where all of the seats aren't sitting straight forward. We don't have any of those protections. I printed up a picture off the internet today of what in an L train car looks like. And I, but using this picture, I think I can demonstrate the problem. In an automobile, we have seat belts. We're all fitting, sitting straight up. We have a seat belt that keeps us as close to this position as possible. Our shoulder is held. Our waist is held. There's some twisting around the seat belt, but generally we're protected. If it's a serious front end crash, we're also protected by the airbag that catches our face like a baseball glove would catch a baseball. But in, an, in a commuter train crash, all of, not all the seats are front and back. There are no seat belts. And they're probably not this morning at 3 a.m., but there are people standing. Now, look at how this car is configured. When that crash occurs, people are going to be driven forward in the car. Um, the train stops. It hits a fixed object. And very, very quickly, all the momentum of the train stops. Everybody is in that, via, in that car is going to be thrown forward. And they have no protection. There's no airbag. There's no seatbelt. And what's worse is that the rotation of their head on their body and the rotation of the brain inside the head is not on the forward and backward axis that we are genetically engineered to survive. Instead, that force is sideways and any number of different directions. Further, there are nothing but hard objects to hit inside this car. You're not going to hit the, the seatbelt. You're not going to hit the cushion of a seat in front of you. You're not going to hit a padded dash. You're going to be thrown in all kinds of directions and almost everything that you can hit is going to be a hard object. When we talk about brain injuries in these kind of crashes. The news coverage is all going to be about who died and who is seriously injured. The problem is the severity of the brain injuries, the severity of the head injuries in these kind of crashes may not be apparent by the time the CTA gets on the news at 10 o'clock and has a press conference. You're having a bunch of people treated very quickly all together at a hospital. And the kind of inquiry we need to be done to know if there's going to be persisting problems with concussion and brain injury after this is going to involve a very detailed examination of how that brain heals, how that brain recovers over the next few days. Anyone who is in that crash needs to go back to the hospital tomorrow, regardless of what symptoms they had today, unless there's no headache, no head pain, no confusion, no symptoms whatsoever. They need to be checked out tomorrow. They need to be checked out the next day. They need to be treated like an NFL quarterback would be treated if he had a concussion. Every day they need to be evaluated. And what's most important is they need to be evaluated for a few of the key symptoms that are likely to be there tomorrow. The most significant symptom is amnesia. If there is amnesia, not for the crash itself, but if there's amnesia, for the period of time from five minutes after that crash until they're discharged from the hospital. So the first few hours after the crash, if there's amnesia for that period, that is the most significant indicator of brain injury. 
There's a few other symptoms that are important. Headache, but you can he get headache just from a sore neck. Um, dizziness, balance, nausea. But there's a vague symptom that is be increasingly being found in the highest percentage of con sport concussion cases, which should also be concerned about, which is fogginess. It's just like the brain. It's not just your eyes. It's just like the brain is not really focusing on what's happening. It's just a general feeling of lack of being completely in touch and things just aren't quite as they should be. Today is Monday. It's less than 10 hours after that crash. Tomorrow, on March 25th, is when we can really determine if there are significant brain injuries in this crash. Thank you.